Good morning, everyone. As always, place your cross on first. Place your cross on every day. You understand? It's, it helps you so much. Am I saying you're not going to go through anything? I'm saying it helps you so much. Our Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, I got a special request to ask you to touch my wife in a very special way, Lord Jesus. And I ask all those at the sound of my voice to continue to pray for my wife, Michelle Beard. Lord Jesus, I ask you to continue to pray for me also. Give me strength. Give both of us strength. Lord Jesus, as you use us, as you seem fit to bring forth whatever word you want us to bring forth for whoever you send us to and do the same for them that are called by your name to do the same work that we are called to do to spread the word to us or to whoever else they need to spread it to. Lord Jesus, as you continue to keep watch over our kids, our family members, our friends, our foes, our acquaintances, co-workers, all of them, touch them all in a special way, Lord Jesus. As you to use me as you see in faith to bring forth this word and all understand all truth so it can bear fruit. In your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to continue reading on Acts from Acts today. Acts chapter 18. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth. Everybody know Corinth, Corinthians. You will see the correlations in these books once you start reading. Like you read this right here, then you go to Corinth, you will see how it relates. The Bible is such a good book. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Pontus, lately come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for by their occupation they were tent makers. So they had regular jobs. They said they were of the same craft. Of the same craft. I mean, Paul knew how to make tents too. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded the Jews and Greeks. And when Silas and Timothy were come from Macedonia, Paul was pressed in the spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus was Christ. Pressed in the spirit to do what? Testify that Jesus was Christ. And when they opposed themselves and blasphemed, he shook his raiment and said to them, Your blood be upon your own hands. I am clean. From henceforth I will go into the Gentiles. Jesus commanded it. They don't hear you. They don't hear me. Dust your feet off and move on to the next. And it departed thence and it entered into a certain man's house named Justice, one that worshipped God, whose house joined heart to the synagogue. And Crispus, the chief ruler of the synagogue, believed on the Lord with all his house. And many of the Corinthians, hearing, believed and were baptized. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. What did he tell Paul? Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. For I am with thee, and no man shall set on thee to hurt thee. For I have much people in this city. God talks to us all like, that. don't worry, I got you. Trust in me. Hmm. Sound familiar? I'm sure if you're a follower of Christ, you've heard something similar to that inside your head. And the night watches and the day watches. You got to think about this also. For the few chapters before this, Paul was persecuted, beaten, thrown in prison like this. It's like God's giving him a little rest. Don't worry about this one. I got you this time. I got you then too, but I got you. I got many people in here, people who love me just as much as you do. And he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. So think about this two chapters called Corinthians. Now you understand? And when Gallio was the deputy of Achaia, the Jews made insurrection with one accord against Paul and brought him to the judgment seat, saying the fellow persuaded men to worship God contrary to the law. And when Paul was now about to open his mouth, Gallio said unto the Jews, If it were a matter of wrong or wicked lewdness, are ye Jews? Reason would that I should bear with you. But if it be a question of words and names and of your law, look you to it, for I will be no judge of such matters. And he drave them from the judgment seat. Then all the Greeks not took Sosthenes, the chief ruler of the synagogue, and beat him before the judgment seat. And Galileo cared for none of those things. Wow, they still beat somebody, but they just didn't beat Paul this time. It's like they got to have blood. These evil people, they got to beat somebody up. But not this time, Paul. I got many people here. I got you here. 
And Paul, after this, tarried yet a good while, and then took his leave of the brethren, and sailed thence into Syria. And with him Priscilla and Aquila, having shown his head in Crescentia, for he had a vow. And he came to Ephesus. Ephesians, anyone? And left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. He always going straight to the Jews. When they desired him to tarry a longer time with them, he consented not. But bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast that cometh in Jerusalem. But I will return by all means. I must keep this feast in Jerusalem. I wonder what feast that was. But I will return again unto you, if God will. That's scripture too. You should not say, this and tomorrow I will go here and I will buy and sell. But you should say, if God's will, here he is. An example of telling you how you should talk. If God will, and he sailed from Ephesus. And when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and saluted the church, he went down to Antioch. And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went all over the country of Galatia and Prigria in order, strengthening all the disciples. So he went around the strengthening the brethren. And a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligent things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him to them and expounded to him the way of God more perfectly. To whom much is given, much is required. Whom much is, whom, you know, like if you, Work diligent, you get more knowledge, you're going to receive more knowledge. Here it is. What's this guy's name? Uh, let me see what is his name is. But anyway, his name is irrelevant. But as you can see, he's seeking God. He knows the Lord, Apollos, and he's seeking the knowledge to whom much is given, much is required. And if you seek the Lord, you will be found in him. And the more you seek the Lord, the more information you're going to get. And the more this information you get, you got to spread it. So he was already on the right course. So guess what? God sent some more information to him. Hey, Paul taught Priscilla and Aquila. And they teaching Apollos. They telling him, hey, you, you know about Jesus? You're doing good now. But we're going to tell you some more. Right? They took him unto them and expounded unto them the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him, who when he was come, beheld them much with which had believed through grace. For he mightily convinced the Jews, and had publicly shown them by the scriptures that Jesus was Christ. Now look at this. A man skilled in the scriptures. Right? So they told him about Jesus. And then he got the, he was like, what? Oh, oh. So he started explaining to them. In the scriptures, Jesus. What was the scriptures? The Torah, the Old Testament. He started explaining to them, Jesus, in the scriptures. Because guess what? This scripture was not yet written. So who was he talking about? How was he explaining the scriptures? In the Old Testament. For all those who don't like to read the Old Testament. You understand? Jesus is there in the Old and the New. That's how the word of God works. The more you want the more you're going to get in regards to the word. Seek first heavenly things and all else will be added to you. But that's, guess what else? Going to be added to you. Knowledge, more knowledge. After knowledge, temperance. And temperance, love. And love, do you understand? The word of God is powerful. It's a lamp. You understand? You got to think about this. This man knew scripture. He wasn't like the other Jews. Apollos was a man who knew scripture. And knew about John and he believed. You know, he believed. He believed so much that God said, I'm going to give you the rest. I'm going to finish the work that I've started by letting you know about me. You know about John, you believe John, great. Now you can believe in me. I'm going to teach you more perfectly how all this works hand to hand. You're already skilled in the Old Testament. You understand? I'm going to skill you in what has came to you. Do you understand? And he was already filled with the Spirit. Hmm. A man already filled with the Spirit. Paul didn't baptize him. He was already filled. Hmm. 
through the knowledge of John, uh, through the knowledge of the scripture, he was already a man of God. So he was already a man of God. He just a, a seeker of the truth. And the truth will set you free and the truth found him. When you seek the truth, the truth will find you. You understand? You don't have to look for it. God has sent people that way and expound the truth to you so you can understand it more perfectly. Do you understand, people? The word of God is a lamp. If you want more, more will be given to you in regards to the word. I'm not talking about no bread, money. I'm talking about the word of God. You understand? You need it. You desire it. You need to desire it. So Paul was Corinth for a year and a half. I got many people there. So I read over, I passed forward over the first chapter of Corinthians. And Paul's talking about the spirit. Talking about how corner you are. How I'm trying to feed you with milk. I got to feed you with milk because you're not ready for the meat yet. You understand? And he was talking about Apollos. Wow. Look how it correlate correlations. He's talking about Apollos. Apollos watered, and I planted her. However it went. Whoa. Apollos, somebody almost wrecked behind me. Hey, it's all good. God is good. He stopped it. But anyway, <laughs> Apollos watered or planted, and they built upon it. It was like, why are you trying to worry about who the word came from? We both work for the same team. Even if he planted in our waters, we all work for God. There's no need to glorify in us. Glorify in the word. As long as you build it upon the same rock, the same foundation. If you're building on the same foundation, you're going to come into one accord. You're going to be believers together. You understand? Or now you're going to have the Jews like who don't want you around, who envy you, who always want blood, who always want to stone somebody. You've been murderers and thieves since the beginning. That's all you want to do. That's all you after. It's blood. You understand? We after the true and sincere blood of Jesus Christ. You understand? To be washed in. They just want blood. They don't care. We've been doing this longer than you. How are you going to tell us something? But there are some people who are going to have their eyes open. I'm going to tell you about this new generation that we live in. A lot of the new generation, our eyes are opening. And I'm telling you who the stubbornest people to reach for us, youngsters. Yes, I'm 40 years old and I consider that young. <laughs> you understand? You know what's hard for us, middle-aged people, to reach older people? You know why? Because older people feel they've been knowing this word for this long and they can't learn from a younger. They can't run, learn from a junior. You understand? Why? If you're seeking the word of God, if it lines up with the truth, take it, receive it. You know the scriptures. So if somebody comes to you speaking in regards to the scriptures, your eyes should be open. But if your eyes are not being open, you might not be with the most high. You might not, you might be against the most high. You might be enemies of God. Haven't I done this and that in your name? Depart from me, ye that work in equity. The scripture tells you all things. If you pay attention closely and listen, you will know what you need to know. It's because God's going to send it your way. And if you feel with the Spirit, you're going to answer who's before you. What did he tell Paul? Speak all I command you to speak. Because I got people in this town, people who love me. Oh, Corinthians people who love me over here you understand I got many people over here you understand sometimes you're gonna go to like I told you before sometimes you're gonna go to places where everybody's willing to hear you because God got many people there many people who want the truth and you're gonna go to some places where nobody wants the truth maybe one person and you're gonna be like Paul you're gonna set your eye on them and God's gonna use you to say whatever needs to be said in the spirit I've been in places like that too. I got to go to testimony some more. I got to go to testimony before. If you're not willing to listen to another in regards to Christ and you call yourself a Christian, you are highly mistaken. We all got to listen to somebody. You know, what did he use 
for Bilal. What did he use for him? A donkey. A donkey to speak to him. You think God can't use anybody just because you know scripture? You think God can't use nobody to tell you something? He used somebody to talk to Apollos. Somebody who just heard the word. Here they are spreading it to Apollos. And Apollos received it. And Apollos knew the scripture. But did that stop him from learning from another person? By no means. Let's go to testimony. Testimony one and two. I'm going to give you two examples. Where God spoke to me. The first time I was still caught up in the world. You know I was. Out. Drinking. With my friends. I was in. Uh, Good Water, Alabama Over there Up there near Alexander City Opelika area I was in Good Water, Alabama And I'm chilling And I'm talking And I'm talking with my friends And a man comes i never seen this man in my life He was staggering He was drunk And everybody's like, what? Hey man, don't worry about him He always talking that crazy nonsense and he come to me and he pulled me to the side. And he started talking scripture to me. I'm like, whoa, I'm listening. They trying their best to get me to stop listening. I'm like, no. One thing I've been taught from my youth was to respect elders. You understand? Whether they drinking or not, I was taught that from a youth. So I'm gonna give him his due respect, whether he got a beer in his hand or not. I'm gonna listen to him. Because that's how I was raised. You understand? I'm going to respect them. How can I judge somebody? And I'm doing the exact same thing. You understand? <laughs> but anyway, he's talking to me. Hey, man. God has called you. To stand out. Not blend in. He talked to me for hours. Expounding all types of things to me. About two weeks later. I'm in this church. Giving my life over to the Lord. When the first message that he sent to me was through a man filled with alcohol and filled in the spirit. Oh, you think it can't happen? You judgmental person, you. Behold, a gluttonous man, a wine bibber. Well, I done had too many wine bibbers talk to me about scripture to know I listen to them too. I'm not that high minded. That I won't listen to another person just because they got a little alcohol in their system. What does that mean? I mean the spirit can't, if the spirit can talk through a donkey, it can talk through anybody. A lot of people ain't hearing their words because of that simple reason. They trying to judge who the word coming from. And God got word for you through them. And guess what? You're not hearing it because you're better. You're envious. Oh, he's not in the church. Well, that was the first time a man filled in the spirit and filled in the spirit <laughs> of alcohol ministered to me. And I took it and I ran with it. I was in a dark place at the time. And he was talking about the people I were around too. Be careful. All kind of warnings and things of such matter. You understand? That's the first time that I can recall somebody with alcohol in their system gave me some words from God. All right, let me give you a second time. This is after I've been given the gift of the word, after I've been studying a while. I'm over here in the campgrounds. I gave this story so many times. I'm over in the campgrounds. I'm chilling with my brothers and neighbors over there. And along come a drunk man. <laughs> Oh, Lord, come a man filled with wine or liquor or beer or whatever it may be. And he pulled me to the side yet again. Houston. And probably they called my name. He asked me my name. What is your name? I said, hey, Houston. Hey, man. You were called to stand out and not blend in. Same exact. This man didn't know me. The other man didn't know me. Gave me the exact same message. But I could have been a hard-headed, stubborn follower of Christ 
and be like, whatever, man, don't talk to me. You drunk. I, ain't, I can't even hear nothing from you. You've been drinking at the wine. <laughs> but I didn't. And I received that message. And a change came into me again. It took me years to really understand what that means. You're going to be around people, but you're not designed to be like them. You understand? God then told me so many times, it's not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but what comes out of a man. So was this man endued with the spirit defiled? What allowed him to speak the word of God if he was so defiled, if the alcohol defiled him and speak so clearly and so fluently to me? These two times, two different people. You better think outside the box, people. That's what's wrong with you. Too stubborn. Look at Houston. He been following Christ for how many years and he still drinks? Hmm. And I'm still filled with the Spirit. Think it's a game. I'm not tooting my own horn. God has taught me. He taught me through a wine bibber, <laughs> which is Jesus Christ, so called wine bibber. And he showed me how he can talk to somebody and somebody can be filled with the spirit even though they drink. God has no respect to persons. You understand? Everybody has their gifts. But you're so judgmental. Let's go back to the story I read yesterday. What is defiled? What is fallen from grace? Well, normally somebody with an addiction or somebody who's a drunk or you know, somebody, they're fallen. But I'm a homosexual preacher. Anyway. Anyway. I'm just going to throw that out there. And that's how a lot of people look at it. Oh. He's an addict. Oh. She smoked weed. He smoked weed. There's no way in the world God would use a weed smoker. Because they are defiled. Oh ye of no understanding. It's not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but what comes out. If you are, if you confound, if you are confounded before men, I will confound you, right? If the Spirit of God dwells in you, I don't care if you got a blood in your hand. If you work for the Lord, he's going to use you to say whatever it is to say. You might have a blood in your hand and rebuking a perfect person. So they say. You might be rebuking a righteous person, so they say they are. With a blood in your hand. Oh, nobody don't want to hear this. Let me pause for a second. I will continue, people. <laughs>